Uh, today, we're going to be talking about how to create recurring revenue using site plans. Uh, we're going to basically focus on uh, how we create recurring revenue using um, basically WordPress maintenance, website maintenance, uh, hosting, and those types of things. And we're going to talk first a little bit about why we, we need to create recurring revenue, and then we're going to dive in uh, to ways to create them, and then we're going to talk about pricing of them. All right, hold on a second. Where's, where's my mouse? There it is. All right, so uh, first, a little bit about me. Um, I've been a website developer for 21 years. Uh, makes me start to feel really old. Um, WordPress developer for nine. I've uh, been doing marketing and SEO for 14. And I've run an age, uh, started out as a freelancer, uh, and then it turned into an agency uh, that I run. Uh, it's called Data Driven Labs, where we do WordPress site builds. Uh, we also do WordPress maintenance and site plans, which is what we're going to talk about today, um, as well as other services like analytics, PPC, and other marketing services like that. Um, I'm also a GoDaddy Pro ambassador. Um, and then in my spare time, I run a Disney blog called Florida Sun Adventures, where we talk about all the fun things you can do here in Florida and uh, Disney and the theme parks and all of that, uh, which, you know, with this year has been a little different because of everything that or this past year, um, you know, but before all that, we were doing a lot of, we we're going out to the parks and, and showing all that stuff. And then, you know, uh, biggest thing is uh, I have a family here and uh, with a teenager, which is uh, also it's fun challenges as well. Um, so let's go ahead and just dive in here. What we're going to be talking about today is um, why should you have uh, recurring revenue? We're gonna give some examples of it. We're gonna also talk about how to create those site plans, some great tools that we have found. And then we're gonna have kind of an open discussion and question time to kind of go in and dive into it uh, a little more in depth. All right. So let's uh, first jump in and let's talk about what is recurring revenue and why is it important? All right. So. What is recurring revenue? So the biggest thing is it's going to be a reliable source of, uh, of, of income for your business. It's income that you're going to be able to plan on coming in, um, you know, and this is going to be through subscriptions and whatnot. And this is, uh, you know, it, it, this is different than you just doing a site build. This is what comes after the site build. This is a way to keep getting money coming in. Basically, it's going to relieve your stress, right? You're going to stop living project to project. Um, you know, the biggest thing is as you roll in all these different projects, if you're not doing recurring revenue, what happens is, is you get this project that comes in. You're working uh, hard to knock that project out. You get it done. You get that last paycheck. The project could have gotten delayed or, or anything like that. And now you got to start all over again. You got to keep hustling. You got to keep trying to sell uh, services uh, nonstop. And um, if you're anything like, you know, a developer, you, or especially if you're a freelancer, you, you're just getting started. You don't have a whole heck of a lot of time to be spending on sales all day long, but your next paycheck is always going to come from that next project. So this actually recurring revenue will help you uh, create some predictable income that's going to be coming in. It's also going to allow you to take a day off. Uh, if you're not having, you know, when I say day off, you know, be able to take a little vacation and only having a few things that you've got to work on versus you know, having to stop all projects and stop all income coming in. All right, so without recurring revenue, it's gonna be very hard for you to continuously turn a profit every single month. Um, and that's because you'll have bad months. Um, we actually had a very bad year last year um, with COVID-19 coming in. Uh, we had a lot of projects that were rolling in and instantly with, you know, that was a uh, March, right around March 15th, when everything started to shut down and close up, everyone was unsure what was going on. And so the first thing everyone did was they went into conserve, uh, conserve, conserve mode where they were just trying to save as much and they, everyone that could put a project on hold. And so what that did is that almost ceased all projects that were coming in for us um, and made it so that we then had no new project revenue coming in, which is where we then had to rely on our recurring revenue that was coming in. And even in that area, we had, uh, we took some hits as well, but that recurring revenue saved us for that entire year, kept us afloat and, and ended up uh, allowing us to continue to uh, run the company. Um, the other thing is every year you start over. Uh, and, and, and what I mean by that is, um, when you don't have recurring revenue and you're doing project to project, 
you go into the next year having without selling any new projects having zero dollars in income uh, what this is going to do is this is going to allow you to stabilize that income and make sure that you have something that's coming in something that you can plan for uh, and that you know what's coming next um, also it allows you to become more than just another vendor uh, to your clients uh, you, you create a relationship so with one-off projects you get forgotten over uh, time so when you work on a project you build something for somebody and that's the last time they hear of you and they, they turn around and they walk away three years down the road when they need something they they're gonna be going oh i had that person build my website who was that i i or, or when they're out at a, a business meetup and there's someone else saying hey, we're looking at building a website. They're gonna go, oh, I, I think I had someone like a couple of years ago work on our site. I don't really remember who that was. First is when you're working with somebody on an ongoing basis doing uh, you know, maintenance plans and recurring revenue, those types of things, they get to know you. You're, you're somebody that they use on a normal basis. So they get to know you and it establishes a stronger relationship. So that way, when they are somewhere, they're gonna be able to turn around and go, oh yeah, 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 yeah. We use data-driven labs to build out our site and they also they do an awesome job keeping our site up and running uh, they take care of all the security stuff whenever i have a need i just give them a call and they jump right in and they take care of it all for me it allows that a uh, relationship to go a little bit further and for them to know who you are it also creates a stronger bond to keep them with you as they come up with other projects or just need to redo things like their website or or, or things such as that so examples of industries that have created recurring revenue outside of words uh, of websites movie theaters uh you've seen different movie theaters start going on this uh subscription based uh platform where uh instead you pay a monthly fee and you can come come see a movie um spotify you know instead of buying records now or going and buying individual songs you now just pay a subscription fee for access to listen to a whole library of songs car wash companies uh, if you have a car wash company in your town uh, you'll notice if you go to their site they have a uh the, they may do a car wash uh their ultimate car wash or whatever for 15 20 bucks a car wash or you can pay them a monthly fee for unlimited car washes um software uh software as, as well microsoft office is a great example uh, microsoft office you you had to buy it originally as one-off items um, and that was it and then when the new next version came out you had to go ahead and buy that next version um, and what they found is when if they've done a great job people didn't buy the next version when it came out the pe people waited um, until their microsoft office was extremely out of date and then they would go and purchase more so they came out with office 365 where now you just pay a monthly fee um, i think it's ten dollars a month or something like that uh, you pay a monthly fee and you get access to all of their software and you get the latest and greatest uh, and that creates a recurring revenue stream for them on a service that used to be a one-off. Um, and, and I think that one of the things that a lot of people ask is with the movie theaters or the car wash companies. So when you offer unlimited and they go, well, how's that profitable? Because now someone can come in on a daily basis and utilize the services that we used to get paid uh, one-off for. And so if they come and they use it too many times, we're actually losing money. Uh, the key is uh, there was a little bit of math and probably studies done and, and, and whatnot to see oh, well, the average person only really comes in to get their car washed every six weeks. The first month they get it, they come in on a weekly basis and they get their car washed for the unlimited car washes. But down the road, they get busy and they start just coming in, you know, once every six weeks, which then means they're not actually expending that much uh, because they've done the math. And even though there is the one guy who does come in every three days to wash, you know, uh, his car, uh, others are not coming in as often and so it balances out over time all right so let's talk about creating uh recurring revenue uh, plans and talk about how easy it is to do such so first we got to figure out what we're going to offer and we got to create different packages right so the first thing we want to do is we want to create an extremely basic and affordable plan this is going to be your plan that you sell to everyone who comes in and builds a website with you this is going to be the one item that you pretty much want to tell them um, while you can do it yourself this is what you want to do with us and then we're going to have more advanced plans these are going to have other services that are going to help benefit they're going to benefit companies but they may not be uh everything that um 
every company can't afford. Uh, these will be more our more luxurious plans. And then we're going to create hidden plans. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. But uh, basically, hidden plans are plans that we're not going to advertise that we have, but it's going to be our um, last-ditch effort if we have somebody who doesn't even want to go with one of the basic plans. Maybe this is our last-ditch effort to try to get them onto some kind of recurring plan. And I'll talk, to, talk about that one in a little bit. All right, so let's talk about the basics of a site plan, right? With the basics, you're going to have um, hosting, WordPress updates, site backups and restore, and WordPress security. Um, these are going to be kind of your basic, uh, if you're looking at just what you should offer to get started, these are normally your basic items um, that you're going to have. And let's talk about that real quick. First, this is the reaction I normally get as soon as I bring up that uh, you should host your clients' websites. Uh, everyone instantly freaks out. I always get... Uh, so many that come back and go, I'm not going to host. I'm not a, I'm not a server admin. I'm not going to get into that business of hosting. Uh, that's not where I need to be. Well, the way to simply look at it is it's also where your clients aren't experts in either. There's different things. Web hosting is the one thing out of all of the things that we're going to talk about. It's the one thing that if you're building a website, you got to have, you got to have web hosting. Your website has to be somewhere online or what was the point of building it? if No one can go to it, right? So your clients, they don't understand hosting. Um, they'll either get something that's too little or get something that's too much. Uh, recently had a client who came in and because they talked to some sales rep at XYZ host, um, they were told they needed all of this stuff for redundancy and all this. And, um, they, they have a very large budget, uh, and you can tell that the sales rep knew this and the sales rep sold them so many different items their hosting was well over two grand a month that they were spending on hosting packages. And I went through and I did a full analysis of their traffic. I looked at everything else and I said, you know, looking at this, you should not be paying more than 150 bucks a month for hosting. Uh, you're way overspending. And they had been spending this for almost three years um, to a hosting company who just took them for a ride. They don't understand what they're looking for. The other problem is on the other side where they get some uh, shared hosting plan that costs $1.95 a month um, and their site gets way too much traffic to be on there and their site is constantly going down and they don't fully understand why or they don't understand how to fix it because they don't know hosting. Um, you can also um, standardize that environment. So this is going to go towards the next part we're going to talk about, which is WordPress updates and doing maintenance. It's something that you know how that environment is set up. There's no surprises. There's no, um, you're, you're not trying to figure out, oh, what version of PHP is this running? And what, you know, you're not having to play with all these different items. You know that environment because you're hosting the site. And then uh, the client is going to contact you regardless. Um, I've learned that no matter who their host is, I, and I've, I've gone to these clients and said, hey, this person is your host. You need to submit a support ticket because you're not using us for hosting. You're using them. They still come to me first and then they ask me to help them word it and then they include me uh, in their support ticket to their hosting company even though I have no you know, power there. They want to have me involved. So they're going to come to you anyways for support uh, on their hosting as it is. And half the time they're going to come and you're going to go, oh, I know how to fix that. That's super easy. You just got to go check this box inside of there. Um, and so you'll end up even helping them fix their host with a different host than you would if it was just your own hosting. So let's talk about the different types of hosting here. Um, managed hosting, um, managed WordPress hosting is um, probably, it's, it's a new, it's, it's come up um, and become a lot bigger lately and everyone offers this. And this is gonna be tailored to WordPress. It's gonna require very little work on your part um, because these environments are completely tailored and set up just to work with WordPress. Uh, they offer usually staging environments, backups, caching, uh, top tier support. Uh, when I say top tier support, they've got WordPress experts that know when you get the white screen of death, they know exactly how to go in there and fix that um, for you. Um, it's very easy if you're not a server admin or you haven't worked um, you know, with servers, uh, you don't fully, you know, command line scares you, you haven't ever jumped into that. This is the perfect opportunity because you're gonna have a support team behind you, you go set up their website on there and you manage it for them and you keep it up and running but there's a whole team of support and it's already tailored to that WordPress website. The thing is, this is gonna be a higher cost, but it requires less work. 
Then you have VPS, dedicated, or cloud. Most of these have turned into cloud offerings, and I'm gonna talk a little more on the cloud side, but you can do the same thing with VPS or a dedicated server. These environments are tailor, uh, can be tailored to WordPress, but that's gonna be you who's gonna be tailoring those to WordPress. You're gonna be installing the different, um, you're gonna be deciding between what versions of SQL to do. You're gonna be uh, putting the different versions of PHP on there. You're required to go ahead and kind of manage that and get it uh, where you want. You decide if you want Redis, Red, uh, Redis on there. You, you gotta go through and figure out all the different pieces that you wanna add. Are you gonna use Nginx or Apache? Um, you know, you're gonna be setting that up yourself. Um, they're for flexible, uh, so they do allow you to set up the right server for the right job. And the reason I say that is, let's say you have a large client that comes in, you can set them up something custom uh, that fits just what their site needs. Uh, and then you can set up a different server for somebody else in a whole different um, configuration. It does require a little bit of knowledge of how hosting works and how servers work, uh, you know, and you usually don't have a whole heck of a lot of support because you are now the uh, server admin, you are doing the support. Um, it's a lot lower cost. You can get it for pretty darn cheap, uh, but at the same time, now you're doing all the work because most of the cost that's involved in that managed WordPress is that support is what you're paying for. And then there's also cPanel with, and WHM hosting. This is usually be your lowest cost because you can get these uh, you know, cheap uh, cPanel reseller plans um, from uh, many different hosts out there. Uh, it's not tailored for WordPress. Uh, shared environments typically are sharing resources on these. There are ways they can do set up containers, so they're not, but a lot of them do uh, share resources. Uh, you can offer email hosting with this um, if you choose. Uh, through cPanel. While we still recommend using something like Office 365 or G Suite, you can offer email hosting with the cPanel setups. Uh, it does require you to know how to use cPanel and Web Host Manager. Um, this is how I used to do it, oh man, years, years, years ago is how I used to offer my hosting packages. Um, we now actually do uh, manage WordPress and um, cloud hosting for our larger clients on those where we custom build them a server on that. And I'll talk a little bit here in just a second how we do that. Okay, so benefits of managed uh, WordPress hosting. Um, we did just talk about that. Your server environment is handled by that host, supports managed by the host, uh, tailored, it's tailored to WordPress so you get the best in class. Um, caching, uh, staging, environments, all of those different things, backups, the latest and greatest performance upgrades, they're all gonna be done for you. And then the key is, uh, when you're looking at these, is you want to find ones that have agency pricing plans. Uh, that's going to be what's going to bring this cost down uh, to something because it's going to scale as you add websites. So to give you a quick idea of what that looks like, I'm going to pull up uh, GoDaddy's managed WordPress agency pricing. Uh, so this is for their managed WordPress um, package and um, this is their agency pricing levels. So you'll see, instead of getting just the one site, you can actually have multiple sites. Um, and so I think Sandy just dropped a link into where this is. It is a little hard to find on the site. You actually have to go to the Manage WordPress um, page and then out at the bottom of the pricing plans, you'll see uh, if you're looking for, I think it says if you're looking for agency or bulk plans, you click here. Uh, but Sandy also dropped the link there for you, so you can grab that. But to give you an idea here, you get, all this different um, items and you get uh, multiple sites inside of this. So this is a way you can actually purchase these larger plans. Uh, you see the last one pro 50 is at $170 a month uh, and you get fit up to 50 websites on there. Um, and then you get a whole bunch of the other things, you get backups, you get um, staging sites, all of those other things that you're going to need uh, to keep the site up and running. But you'll see as you get, as you add more sites to it, comes out to, at the end, $3.40 a website. So keep in mind, that's your hard cost, it's $3.40. And the great thing is, you now have a managed WordPress host, which means you have the support behind it, um, who you can reach out to whenever you need um, help or anything like that. You can reach out to those experts to help fix that so you're not having to um, be an ad, a server admin. They're gonna keep the site up and the, the site up and running for you. You're just managing that hosting side. So there's a couple of them out there. You have GoDaddy, Flywheel, and Kensta. Um, we just talked about GoDaddy and showed you those plans. And I kind of broke down uh, what those come out on costs. Uh, you can get it from $5 to $3.40 a site as you scale up. Um, and I don't know if as you get bigger, how much it goes after 50. 
Um, but like Flywheel, for example, Flywheel is uh, starts at about $11.50 a site at their um, one plan, and then it goes down to $8 a site, and there's different discounts if you pay annually and stuff. We use Flywheel for ours, and that's mainly because we got started a long time ago. We have a lot of websites on there. We've scaled to a point where we're at $6 a site, I believe, um, with ours, um, and that's a combination of paying annually as well as just the number of sites we have in there, and we've um, we've been, we've got built in pricing from when we got started with them. Um, shoot, I think that was like four years ago. We switched to them. Uh, so there, there's that. And then you got Kensta as well. They're a little bit more pricey, but they also offer some different services as well. Key is go and dig through these different ones and see which one works best for you and your clients and what your clients need. Uh, some of these have, um, you know, higher, uh, different types of, um, uh, services uh, and are tailored towards different types of websites. So just really kind of dive into them, see which one works best for you um, to offer. Okay, so let's talk about if you decide to go the cloud route, right? Um, if you decide to host your site um, in the cloud, then you're going to have different tools that can help you run these. And so what's going to happen is actually I put these slides out of order. So give me two seconds. We're going to start with this slide and go back. <laughs> Um, with hosting in the cloud, what you get to do is you get to bring your, basically bring your own server and you can spin up as many, um, as many of these servers as you need. You can put multiple uh, clients on a server. This is really up to you. You can spin up a really cheap $5 a month server from DigitalOcean, UpCloud, AWS, Google Cloud Services, Linode. Um, they all have their different pricing, but you can get a server usually as cheap as $5 a month for a very basic server that has one gig of RAM. I think it's one gig of RAM. Um, at the $5 plan, DigitalOcean, and uh, one CPU and so forth. And you can scale and you can basically build the server that you need. Uh, for example, we have a client uh, that receives over 2 million hits to their site a month. So we have a much larger server that we're running, but that server alone only costs us about $80 a month to run just that one server for, for them versus if we were to go through any kind of managed host um, to get to the scale and the amount of traffic they had we were looking anywhere between $800 to $1,000 a month uh, through one of those. Um, so you can see really how managing your own can really save money on this side. Okay, so we talked about being able to bring DigitalOcean, AWS, Google Cloud, any of those different pieces over. Um, but, uh, and I see someone said they don't have any server knowledge, they'd be crashing it all the time. Um, that's where, while I still say if you have zero knowledge, probably the managed WordPress route is going to be the route you want to stick uh, stick to. There are some services out there um, that actually help making this make this easier. One's called SpinUp WP. You also have RunCloud and Cloudways. Um, these are services that you pay, and they're they're really they're really um, low cost. I think they're like twelve dollars a month or something like that. Um, and you pay you pay these services, and they help spin up your server. You basically connect it over and they'll spin up your servers for you and they'll basically manage and give you that nice kind of hosting dashboard you're used to. They'll take care of making the updates to the server for the security updates. Um, and they make a nice little easy to click through dashboard so you can run your own hosting company on your own cloud server without having to use one of these hosting companies. Now, that said, you still end up being the support. So if something does happen, you do need to probably, you, you might have to go in and figure out how to uh, manage that. Also, funny note, uh, I didn't realize this until I put all three logos in this slide. Uh, they seem to all like the same idea for uh, their icon, it seems, uh, which I thought was kind of funny. All right, so using these different servers uh, uh, services for that, it allow, a lot of them allow you to add page caching, let's encrypt SSL, staging sites, backups. You get a lot of those cool tools that you have normally with a managed host on that cloud-based hosting. So this is a way to go. Again, I do say you may want to, um, for if you're getting started, maybe just purchase one of these and play around with it on the side and don't put any of your clients on it until you can fully learn how uh, all that works and how, how to do that. Um, just because you, know, you don't want to mess up and take down a client's website. Uh, so it's a great way to start learning a little bit how to build your own server. And you may decide it's not something you want to do. You may decide it is something, like I said, we still use the managed, I've been, I've been in server administration for a long time. Uh, that's what I went to school for. I understand it uh, very well. And yet I still use managed hosts for most of our small clients. 
Um, I do use uh, with these hosts, uh, or I do use these types of servers for our larger clients who require a much larger server, but don't want to spend the, um, you know, spend a thousand dollars a month on hosting. Um, then this is where I come in and I, I, I spin these up uh, for them. And I use spin up WP on uh, and with uh, UpCloud uh, for mine, for my uh, cloud hosting. All right, so let's talk about the next, uh, the next piece, keeping websites up, uh, updated and running smooth. So <laughs> clients, they, uh, you'll notice this when you log in after you hand a website over to a client. If you come back five months, you'll notice the last time that site was updated was when you logged out last. Um, they don't run the updates, and if they do, they uh, will break things. Um, they probably actually will add like 30 plugins while you're gone and uh, and not be managing or looking at them and just you'll end up coming in going, what do you use these for? And I'll go, oh, it's just trying something out. And like, okay, well, you left them all on there. Do you need them all? No, 25 of those you can delete. We don't, I don't need them anymore. So go in and offer this as part of your uh, maintenance package. You know, offer weekly updates. What we do is we offer weekly updates and what we do is we promise quicker updates uh, for security updates. Uh, so if a, a major security flaw comes out, um, we get notified. We use GoDaddy Pro sites for that, and it does notify us and saying, hey, this site has a security issue. Uh, we go in and we check, and oftentimes there's already an update for that plugin that we can apply to fix those security update, or those security issues. Other than that, we normally perform weekly updates. I go in uh, usually on a Monday morning or Tuesday morning, and we run updates across all our sites, and I'll show you how to do that. It's actually really easy. Um, and then if a plugin breaks a site, We'll either do a quick fix if I can look at it and go, oh, I, I know what happened here. I just need to do this real quick. I'll make that quick fix. Um, or we'll advise the client on next steps. So if it's a, um, and a lot of times if it breaks the site, we'll roll back a backup. We'll see what broke the site and we'll reach out to the client and say, you know, this plugin has an issue. We're going to pause updates on this plugin. Uh, you may want to work with the developer of this plugin to see if uh, a fix is available. Or what we'll do oftentimes is pause it uh, take a note of it and then come back and see a lot of times uh, when a plugin update comes out that's bad, uh, the plugin uh, the plugin owner will know that they had a problem happen and usually within a day or two they release a second update that fixes that problem and then we'll run that update to the to the fix uh, for the client. And then we also uh, use tools to help us manage this process. So you do have GoDaddy Pro. Uh, I don't know if this is going to work. Oh yeah, there it goes. So with GoDaddy Pro, you have safe, up, uh, easy and safe updates. Uh, and so you can kind of see this is running through right here. Uh, basically, you check off all the updates you want to run, and you can actually have it do a visual comparison. And then when you click Safe Update, it's going to run through, and it's going to go through. It's going to create a backup of the sites first, and then it's going to go through and run all of those plugin updates. And you'll see that's what it's doing here. I'm going to fast forward just a little bit so we can get to the, to the end here. You'll see it's running the updates on the sites. And all right, and so then you click compare, and then it pops up a side by side screen where you can then go click through all of your sites. So there's my uh, website that I haven't updated in years. I mean, I'm updating the plugins, but like I haven't updated at a blog post or anything. My other site, and you can see you kind of just jump through the different ones, and you basically take that slider, there's a data driven labs, and you just scroll, and you can see if anything has changed or shifted, and then you can hit OK. If it has, see that Restore button? You can click on that Restore button, and you can restore a backup of that site immediately uh, so that you can fix any issues that you may have ran into. So uh, that's, that's how that works. Uh, like I said, you can run these updates pretty quick. Um, I like to say that we spend probably about, um, probably about 30 minutes a week uh, running updates for all of our sites um, on Mondays. And then we have the security the security um, updates that we have to run and those pop up throughout the week. But ultimately we probably only spend maybe an hour to an hour and a half a week uh, running updates across all of our sites um, with uh, using this tool. So it makes it a lot easier to run updates at a mass scale. And I think that's a duplicate slide. There we go. All right, so keeping websites uh, backed up, this is going to give someone a peace of mind, right? So uh, everyone always freaks out uh, when something bad happens on their website. So you want to give them that peace of mind that you've 
got backups going all the way back uh, to the end of time, uh, which is not possible, but going back, you know, at least a little beyond that day. Because I'll notice a lot of times when clients have issues, they don't notice right away that they had a problem. It's usually, oh, a week ago I made this change and it broke everything. Can we roll back to that, that previous backup? So keeping your websites backed up is a great service to offer. Uh, backups, you want them to happen regularly. Uh, daily is the best. Uh, make sure that you can easily restore those backups. And I like to have the backups in two different places. So you can do a hosting backup or you can do uh, use an additional service like GoDaddy Pro. I like to use both. So uh, all of our sites, well, most of our managed sites are all uh, with Flywheel. Uh, Flywheel has uh, backups built in. Um, you also notice that pretty much all the other ones that we listed there, uh, Kensta, uh, GoDaddy, all of them have backup hosting backups that they'll perform as well. I always have that set up as well as I set up backups with GoDaddy Pro. And the reason I do it in both places is just in case, you know, one of those has an issue, then we at least know that we have the backup in another place. I can tell you I've had zero times I've ever actually had to use that secondary backup, but it's always been nice to have um, just because it's good to know that um, recently there was a, a data center fire over in, I think it was France, um, and I know um, there was a couple of services that were running. Uh, one of the big services was, I think it was WP Rocket and ImageFi. Uh, they ran out of that, that, that uh, server, uh, out of that data center. Um, and that data center completely burned to the ground. Well, ironically enough, that data center had its own backups that they stored in the same data center that burned down. So when the data center burned down, all the backups burned down with it. Um, luckily, ImageFi and WP Rocket had backups in a whole separate place. And so they were able to get their webs, uh, their services back up. It did take them a little bit of time to get everything back up, but they got everything back up and running. Um, so you gotta look at that things can happen. It's rare, but things can happen. And you would really wanna know that all that stuff is somewhere uh, secondary to uh, where, um, you know, instead of keeping it all in one place, just in case something like that happens. Okay, so offering security. Uh, this is always the part that people get scared of. They're like, oh, I don't, I'm not a security expert. Um, it's really easy if you do everything right. Most of the security is in the different services that you offer. So secured hosting environments, SSLs, um, performing those regular updates we we're talking about. That's all uh, stuff that you're already offering because they're using your platform. This is why I also say you running the hosting services is so important because you can pick and make sure that you've got a secure hosting environment. All three of those that I listed, um, GoDaddy, uh, Flywheel, and Kensta, all have very secure, um, uh, uh, have extra measures in place for security in, in there that uh, help protect sites from being hacked. Um, now, in addition, you can also run security scans, which Again, GoDaddy Pro sites actually runs those security scans. So it'll tell you when a plugin uh, has a security vulnerability and needs updating, same with WordPress core, um, as well as if it doses anything off like a hacked site. In addition, you want to also, you can also offer the service of fixing hack sites, because if you're doing everything right, you should not have to fix a hack site. I can say since I've been offering that as part of my services for the last four years, um, I have only had one site that was hacked. Um, and ironically enough, it was one of, it was my Disney blog site, which is the, the irony in it. It was my own site that got hacked, not a client site. Um, now, the cool thing is fixing those hacked sites, some of your managed hosts actually offer this as part of their services. I know with mine, uh, Flywheel will jump in and um, they'll actually fix that for me and clean it out as part of their services with hosting with them. Uh, so you, that's one thing when you're looking at hosts, check and see what they will do in a case like that because it's really nice when they're able to jump in and do that for you. Uh, the other thing is you can always use uh, Securi as insurance. So for our sites that we don't have uh, through the host, a uh, uh, the ability for it to be cleaned, what we do is we will then, if a site gets hacked, we'll go ahead and purchase a Securi uh, plan for that site and it's about $200 and they'll go in, they'll clean out the malware and protect the site for an additional year after that uh, from any new hacks that happen on there. Um, so that's how we kind of go in um, to clean a hacked site as we do those. Now we do put other uh, things in place for different clients, depending on what they want. We'll install some two-factor authentication plugins um, and we'll help them get all that set up uh, depending on if they want that. And we also make sure we have just 
based at the host level, we have a lot of things that are included in our hosting plan for security, such as uh, require secure passwords, uh, which may upset some clients that they can't use their dog's name as their password. Instead, they got to use a whole random amount of characters, but we explain that's for security purposes um, and different things along those lines. Um, so security is a lot of times in those services you already offer, but you can build out from that to what level you want. You can even purchase one of those security uh, uh, packages for them if you wanted. All right, so you can use a tool to help uh, get get a lot of this done. Like I did, I've mentioned GoDaddy Pro sites. I'm gonna throw this slide in there. I'm not trying to sell anything here. Um, I just wanna, this is who um, we use to do a lot of this stuff. Uh, a lot of it, some of it's free. Some of it is uh, you gotta use uh, their premium stuff, which can go up to, I think if you added all the features, it comes out to like $9 per site. Depending how many sites you have, there are bulk plans available as well. Um, I we are actually on their bulk plan, which basically comes out to a dollar per site um, for us on that bulk plan. Uh, so as you grow, they kind of recommend you to go up to these plans. It, again, it's that whole scale. As you scale, things get a little cheaper. Um, Cam, we just got to fix a hacked site today. <laughs> um, that sounds fun. Um, I don't envy you. Uh, so, anyways. Uh, yeah, so this is a great tool. There are other tools out there that you can use um, to do this type of type of stuff. There's a I think main WP, there's a, a blog vault. Uh, there's other services out there to kind of create this dashboard that can manage a lot of these different pieces. Um, I've been using GoDaddy Pro sites um, all the way back to when it was originally the original managed WP before it was even managed WP Orion. Um, so I've been using it for a long time and I absolutely love it. And uh, I recommend it to everyone when they're looking for a tool. But there are other tools out there too. Again, evaluate all the tools, see which one fits your needs uh, and your price points. Creating additional uh, recurring revenue, uh, you can add other things in there. So we have a higher level plan where we do speed optimization. With that, I use an account from ImageFi so that we optimize all their images. Um, we also put MP Rocket on those sites. Uh, we also can hook up a CDN service, which actually Flywheel now offers the CDN service built in. I think Kensta does as well. Um, I'm not sure, like I said, the GoDaddy, um, pro, the GoDaddy hosting one is kind of a new offering. I'd have to go through there and see. I think they have a CDN, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, you know, if you, let's say you do SEO, you can make SEO packages um, that you can create for recurring uh, revenue. And it can also include support and dev hours. Um, so this can be either discounted hours or they can be included in each thing as a certain amount of time. I'll give you an idea of what we do here at Daydream Labs. We have a $59 plan. It's our basic plan. We have a $199 plan, uh, which is our advanced. And I actually think we're going to be changing some of those pricing up a little bit but in offerings. But you'll see that we have different things added into these. You'll see the basic is just those basics that we already talked about. And then you'll see there's a whole bunch more in the advanced, including an hour of support time, which can be they can use for whatever they want. Uh, yeah. Yep. And uh, and then with all our plans, we include the hosting, and that's that's the key with what we do. Um, everything we say we include hosting, so that if they decide they want to keep their site hosted somewhere else, that we can then it doesn't change the price because it's just an included piece. Um, we also offer hidden plans, which I'll talk about in a minute, but. Um, we have a hidden plan that is, I think it's like $25 a month. Um, and that's basically just hosting, um, just hosting and, uh, backups is all that, all that one is. Um, and we offer that when a client, uh, comes back and just says that they can't afford the, uh, the, uh, either of our maintenance plans. That's our last ditch effort to try and keep them on some kind of recurring, mainly for the relationship side of things. Um, we'll offer that out to them. Uh, Example of, oh, that's, our, that's our hosting. Um, so what we do is we include the light package and then we have upgrades if they need more traffic. Um, most of our sites all fall under the light category. Uh, we do have a couple that do fall under the other ones, but most of them stay down below. And these are the ones that will stay on our managed hosting. If they go over that 100,000 visits, we're gonna build them a custom server and you spin up and up cloud to uh, build them that custom server to make sure that we keep this uh, stuff running fast. All right, so how do we price those uh, plans and how do you sell them? So this is where it's gonna really depend on what do you sell your websites for. Um, if you're selling a website for a thousand bucks, 
you're not going to get someone on board on the maintenance plan at $150 a month because uh, there's a reason they're going with that cheap website. Um, so you're going to want to tailor that pricing package for those. Um, you want to go ahead and have hosting plans that are hidden. That's what we just kind of talked about so that if you need to get that client on and you want to get that client on to stay on a um, recurring uh, plan, you at least have those that you can offer last minute. And then you can create custom plans for clients that have higher needs. That's a big one to remember. You're going to get clients that are going to come in with uh, specific requirements. We have one uh, school that just came in. And they have really crazy requirements because of registrations and the way they do the registration is kind of a free for all that they just have all the moms come in and try to register their, uh, their children all at the same time. So everyone pings the server one day at 8 a.m. in the morning and all try to get through. And it's, it's uh, we got to make sure the server is up and running. We got to monitor it and all that. And so we have different hosting packages put together for those types. Uh, e-commerce, for example, if you're uh, doing e-commerce, you may want to have a different e-commerce um, add-on or something to manage those because they do require a little bit more work, especially if it's a busier store. Um, you're not selling a maintenance plan, you're selling peace of mind. And this is the biggest thing. I don't ever come in and be like, I'm selling you a website maintenance plan or hosting. We come back and we tell them that we're selling the peace of mind that we're going to take care of everything. Um, they're the expert in whatever business field they're in. That's what they, they're, they're experts in. That's what they've been honing their craft on. I've been doing this for 21 years. Um, this is my expertise, but I'm not a plumber. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to go try and um, replumb my house. I'm going to hire an expert to do that. And so that's the same thing here is that plumber, he can go plumb a house, but he's not a web expert. So this is where we come in and we say, Hey, we are, um, we're here to help you, um, you know, keep your site up and running. You just contact us whenever you need anything and we'll take care of it for you. And that's all you have to worry about. You don't have to go worry about contacting XYZ host because your website's running slow and then they come back and say, oh, it's this plugin and you gotta go reach out to that plugin person. And then you go and say, oh, well, it's this on there. And then you're jumping between all of these different people. We wanna say, come to us and we will handle all of it for you together. Um, and so that's really the biggest reason why we like to try to sell these uh, packages and sell it as a um, something you don't have to worry about. Um, and then when you're selling them, I have found in mind that we mention it in the proposal and we include the details of it in the proposal. Um, and we will talk about it a little bit during the site proposal phase, but then we do more the sales pitch as we get closer to launch. Usually during one of the revisions phases, when we're getting close to launching the site, we start talking about, hey, we got to launch your site. Uh, we want to go ahead and get you set up with the maintenance in our hosting so that we can keep the site running. A lot of times now that we've built that relationship with them, so they have that trust with us at this point. We now know their site. We can say, hey, we know that this plugin can be a little finicky. Uh, you bring us in. We know this plugin because we built the site. We can definitely keep this working for you. Uh, so that's kind of how we, when, where we go at it uh, to try to, to um, bring them in. And then, of course, you want to retain these clients. Uh, so you don't want to lose them to another service by them thinking they can do it themselves. So how do you do that? Well, report back to them. Um, uh, we're gonna go back to talk about GoDaddy Pro Sites again. They have a feature where you can actually send monthly reports and it actually shows all the times you've ran updates. It shows all of those different things so they can see, hey, you're doing a whole bunch of stuff on the site. So as long as we can show them, hey, this is what we're doing on your site. Here's your speed going on. Here's the amount of backups we've even taken. So they can see that all of that's there. Um, don't hide from them, uh, be out in the open and communicate with them. Uh, so, you know, if they send something in, don't just send back a one word answer. I like to send back it. I look at, you know, even this have putting a little bit of small talk in a closing of a ticket, you know, I'll come in and say, Hey, uh, we took care of this. Um, you know, and that if I know where they're located, I'll say, you know, Hey, have a great weekend. It looks like it's going to be a, a sunny day over there on the West coast of Florida. So, uh, you know, hopefully you have some fun plans for, for this day, you know? So putting all that out there and kind of just having that small talk and just, you know, building that relationship side, uh, go above and beyond on the, on the quiet clients. So you'll have clients that will come in. These are gonna be your favorite clients because you won't hear from them for two years. They'll just pay their bill and you never hear from them. Um, Every once in a while, they may come back and say, hey, I need this done. And it's typically something you charge an hourly fee for. And let's say they come in, and it's like a 30 minute job uh, and you just got to jump in and you do it. Don't, if they haven't had any requests or anything, sometimes I look at it and go, 
I'm just going to give them that 30 minutes for free um, because um, it took no time at all. It's going to take me more time to generate an invoice and send it over to them. They've been a client for two years. I'm just going to keep them on board and we're just going to wave this little, little this little change for them off. And that goes a lo- long ways with clients. Now, don't, don't wave off a, a large project. Um, don't tell them you're going to wave it off. Um, I just, at the end of the month when I hit the billing, I just end up not issuing a bill and I let them know, Hey, we just wrote that off. Um, you know, and, and, and we usually just, that's, that's how we do it. Um, and we only do it with certain clients too. There are some clients, if you do that, they will expect it every time. So just know and feel out your clients, uh, show value in your service of what you're doing. All right. So we're going to jump through real quick. I'm going to talk about some of the tools. Uh, billing is a big deal. Um, monthly credit card subscriptions are the best way to keep it all flowing. Here's why. You can offer uh, maintenance packages on a quarterly or annual plan, but look at it this way. When they come in, you want that to look like a low number so they forget about it. Uh, a great example, uh, I just had my renewal. I do a lot of things annually to save some money. Uh, Cal- Calendly is a, subscri- a service I use for booking time on my calendar. Um, I pay that one annually, and I literally just got the... Uh, uh, noticed today that it was going to, or yesterday that it was going to be billing um, my annual and it was at $144. Well, as soon as I sold $144, I went, Ooh, that's a lot of money. And I started thinking about it and thinking, well, how much do I really use this service? Am I using it a whole lot? Is this something that I want to keep? And ultimately I ended up keeping it and, and paying the annual fee versus if I were paying monthly, it would be billing it. I think it's like $12 a month or something like that. It would be billing me a small amount that I would just forget about. I wouldn't even pay attention to. Uh, so sometimes having that monthly auto bill um, allows them to just not really think about it versus if you do an annual, especially you're talking like a hundred dollar maintenance plan, uh, you bill them 12, they see a $1,200 bill come coming down the line. They're going to start to rethink, do I want to pay this or not? Um, so sometimes offering it in a monthly smaller number uh, just mentally helps people uh, ignore it and, 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 and see the value in it. Uh, but we do offer some for some of our clients in the in annual or quarterly be, based off of their accounting methods. And also we uh, sometimes they'll want discounts if they pay annually. So we'll, we'll work, we'll work those deals with them, but there are ways to do this. Uh, you don't want to be sitting here trying to manually process credit cards. So uh, Zoho subscriptions uh, is what we use here. Uh, it's an amazing service uh, for running subscriptions. Flywheel actually just launched this new thing called Flywheel Growth Suite, which uh, allows freelancers to fully charge, especially if you're using their um, hosting services. Um, so if you're using a host, if you're going to use them as your host uh, for your agency hosting, take a look at their Flywheel Growth Suite. It actually has a way for you to bill through it uh, and hooks to Stripe, basically. It's kind of cool. Uh, you can also do, use WooCommerce subscriptions. Uh, you also have Recurly, Chargeify. Um, I think all of these actually uh, use uh, Stripe as the back end. Um, but you can set those up. We use Zoho subscriptions. It auto bills uh, every month, and I just see the Stripe uh, dollars flowing in each uh, each day uh, to our bank account, so it works out great. Uh, if you don't want to do all of the updates and everything, there are uh, white label services you can use to do that. GoWP um, has one, uh, Flywheel Managed Updates. Uh, so again, Flywheel has a service now that they will manage and run the updates for you. Uh, there's also WP Buffs, Maintain. There's a couple others out there. Uh, these are all white label services. You'll have to have conversations to see what the pricing is, but um, you can offload that service if you want. Just remember, every time you offload that service, that's uh, eaten into your revenue and your profits that you would be taking home. But it can be saving you time, so it, there might be a plus to that. All right, so that was a lot to get through. Um, and we have some time available and open for discussion. So I'll hand it back over to Sandy to start with that. We have a lot of questions that have come in. So I'm going to start at the top and we'll work our way through on those. So um, Cami asked, have you ever offered a service to check on form submissions for clients? An example would be signing in and checking gravity forms entries and making sure the client is receiving their emails by sending them the downloaded entries. Um, so that would be where we talk about creating custom plans. Um, you can do that. So we have one client, we, they use a plugin that often breaks. And so we actually, every time we go to update that plugin, we do a whole special way of upgrading it, um, have our own workflow and they pay extra for that. Um, so you can create that as a recurring, um, like a specialized plan to do that. Uh, we actually use a, a postmark. 
um, for all of our sites that host with us. It's one of the services we include and we hook it to that for emails because we have just found using uh, the host for emails, sometimes things get lost and with Postmark, we can um, make sure that they're getting their emails and we pay basically for an agency level account and then we set up all of our clients inside of uh, Postmark to make the emails, um, you know, they have SMTP relay for that. Barry asks, how do you manage liabilities when you're basically the end all be all, but security services are actually provided by your tech provider? Um, so I'm not an attorney. <laughs> um, I'll say that um, we have um, we have a contract that we um, had written by a attorney um, and she tells me that we are good inside of there um, and it's all that fine legalese print. Um, there's also services um, out there if you're just getting started, uh, I'll throw out uh, Monster Contracts. I think that's the name of it, Monster Contracts. Um, it's ran by uh, Nathan Ingram. Um, they have a lot of this that they've flushed out already uh, with a lot of those types of terms in there to handle liabilities like that, um, where you just check off a few boxes and they, um, they'll create a contract that has been flushed out for those types of things and liabilities and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I, we, we rely on what our contract states and I couldn't fully explain it to you if I wanted to. <laughs> Barry also asked, what are the top three distinctions of WordPress over other options? Top three distinctions of WordPress over, uh, I'm assuming just a website or like a Drupal, Wix, something like that. I'm going to assume that's the case. Um, so that's the larger discussion of you know the what what does WordPress offer that other sites um, don't. Um, we use WordPress. WordPress runs. I think it's almost up to forty percent of the internet now. Um, we choose WordPress just because uh, it's a uh, open source platform that we can build on. It has an amazing community in it. Um, lots of uh, ways that you can extend it to work in different ways uh, and fashions. You can even customize. Uh, if there's not a, a solution out there for you, you can e easily build your own um, onto it versus some of these other platforms. And because it's all hosted, uh, if you use uh, WordPress.org, uh, which is the code that you would host, um, that is, you can you it, it's your site. You can take and move it wherever you want versus some of these other solutions out there. Uh, such as Webflow, Wix, um, uh, Square, uh, Squarespace. Yeah, I think it's Squarespace. Um, you know, all of those you're hosted on their platform, running on their platform, and you can't always just take everything with you. So I think it's because you get to own your data. That's why I, I prefer WordPress, and I've just been doing it for a long time, so it's my area. There are other stuff like Drupal um, and Joomla and all those open source platforms that you can use as well. Um, we just focus on WordPress here. Uh, another question, how do you manage rush job requests or customers who are modifying things too frequently or they don't have a cadence? Because, you know, you're basically like support requests. So we have a, uh, with our support, uh, we do have a, where we, we have a two-day business turnaround and it just comes to training your clients is what it does. Um, so we tell them that we have a two-day turnaround on basic support requests. Uh, if you send me in a whole entire landing page redesign, um, that's going to be considered a project and it will be quoted as a project and we'll send out timelines and all of that and quote you a time. Uh, if it's just changing out a item here or there, we have a two day business um, turnaround that we will make sure it's done. A lot of times we get done way earlier than that, but um, we have that leeway to go with that. And it's just built into our contract. Um, and then we make sure that we educate clients on it. Um, we don't, um, we don't, um, we don't per se have a ex, um, escalation process on that side, but we have done specialized escalation requests or specialized. They had to have this thing posted at 11 PM on a Saturday night. Um, we have done specialized requests and usually we, um, uh, I believe we charge a uh, double, um, for those types of hours and those types of requests because they're off hours. So the next question is actually a two-part question, and that is, A, what kind of pricing do you recommend? B, more specifically, do you recommend a monthly fee for design and maintenance or a flat fee for design and then monthly maintenance? So 
we like to we don't like to uh build a website on a um monthly um service and main reason for that is um while you can have every contract written in the world um if you were to say hey you have to stay on with us for 12 months and pay a hundred dollars a month so that we get our twelve hundred dollars at the end for the site side um what happens if after month two they they leave well your first thing is oh well then i'll just take them to court because i have a contract for them to stay for 12 months i can tell you from experience um you're going to spend more money trying to collect the rest of that thousand dollars than you are going to just write it off um we've had to write off um many bills and um i think we have found that it's not worth pursuing really unless it's um over depending on where they're located and everything um, it can be a, a you're not really going to really collect anything unless it's over ten fifteen thousand um, dollars is it actually worth taking the legal route a lot of it's just going to be written off so we find that it's better to charge up front for the design services and then just charge the maintenance going um, forward uh, that's the way we have done it we have done others where we had a down payment where you paid the paid six hundred dollars and then you paid off the site over 12 months um and that worked for us i think we only had one client kind of burn us on that one um and that worked as well for us and we do have it in our back pocket if we ever really have a client that we fully trust uh and they're in a hardship and we want to help them but the other way i look at it is if they can't afford to pay for the site up front they're most likely going to bail on you because they're not financially stable in their side to be able to afford um to continue paying that monthly fee so we find to just charge up front and then charge the maintenance fees uh, for maintaining and updating the site. Awesome. And the last question I have in the Q&A section is, what are the attributes of a bad customer that you would rather have your competition take care of, i.e. the low revenue, high service profile? Um, so, you know, you just got to feel them out during the sales process. You'll know there's going to be those red flags that come up that you're going to see. Um, you can usually tell they're very needy and very demanding in the sales process. We just don't take those clients. Um, we'll often say that um, we feel that it's better. And also with our, our, our maintenance, we don't have to offer maintenance to everybody. So if the build was just a nasty build and it was just a client that we just know is going to continue to be a problem after we're done, uh, what we do is we just send an email that just tells them about all the different maintenance uh you know, programs that are out there, if they're interested in those, or we just send them a little educational piece that just talks about, hey, keep your site updated. Um, we actually have affiliate links uh, to a bunch of the other web hosts out there um, that do decent WordPress hosting that you can do yourself. So we usually just shoot that over so they can use that and maybe we get a little bit off the affiliate if they don't use that, whatever. Um, and then we just don't take the maintenance with them. Um, you know, you don't want to you don't want to take on a bunch of bad clients. Um, because they're going to end up just wearing you down. Uh, so that's that's kind of how we handle that side with uh, bad clients. And if they are on a maintenance plan with us and they're, they become a bad client, we do have an out clause depending how bad of a client they become. Um, if they start to become an abusive or a bad client, we've actually had one client who um, verbally abused our staff um, and we exercised the part of our contract. It gives us a 30 day out to uh, go ahead and just let them know that we were not going to be continuing services with them. Um, and we exercised that part of the contract and uh, we let them go in the proper way. We gave them all the access, all the stuff they needed. We even assisted with their new host to help them get moved over to their new host and all of that. And I think the key there, you hit on the nail on the head, is make sure you make that as a seamless transition for them and, and don't um, steamroll them in the process. If you're going to let them go, make sure you're you're letting them go in the right way. And I, I, I'll follow up with just real quick. Vindictiveness has no place in business. Um, so never play, you, 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 even if a client's leaving you and you're upset they're leaving you, you still be professional and make it as easy as possible because... Uh, you never know when they're going to come back. I've had three clients that left us and uh, ended up coming back because they realized they did not get the same level of service that they were having with us with somebody else. And they ended up coming back and they've been great clients since they came back. Awesome. Well, again, this is Chris Edwards. He's with Data Driven Labs. Thank you so much for your time today, Chris. We definitely appreciate it. Um, and then for everyone that's still with us, 
Um, events.godaddy.com is your home for all of our events. Next week is our big expand event. You don't want to miss that. And then next month, we're going to be starting in on accessibility. So that's going to be a whole nother animal that's going to be awesome for us to tackle uh, as agency owners and freelancers. That is a hot topic right now. So we will see you all next week in Expand. Have a wonderful week.